Welcome to a podcast unlike any other. Presented by the Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame. In support of our local music scene. It's the Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast. Tonight's guests, Jenna Clay. And the Jelly Bricks. This episode is sponsored by Members First. And now, your hosts, Daniel Kime and Alan McCutcheon. Hey, welcome to the Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel. I'm Alan. And this week's guest, we have Jenna Clay from Wink 104 and 93.5 WTPA. Jenna, thank you for coming on. Well, it's past my bedtime, but it was worth it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's true. Yeah, because radio DJs, you guys work. What time do you you have to be up tomorrow? What time do I have to be up? Well, I start working anytime between like 3.30 and 4. So I have the bedtime of a toddler, which is really embarrassing. Yeah, a.m. It's early. Oh yeah, in my fact, my God. phone says, good evening, when I'm getting up. And I'm like, no, it's morning. You woke me up. So <laughs> oh my God. that's fun. I didn't even thought about that. Wow. Yeah. That's true. Because you guys probably have to prep so much stuff for them for when the rest of us wake up. To, like, oh, now it's morning for us. You guys already have everything ready to go then. That's right. And I do news and a morning show, so I have a lot to prepare. So, yeah. So that's the thing. You do two different shows. You do the news mm-hmm. on Wink 104, yes. and now you're doing the morning show on WTPA. Yes. I'm very excited about WTPA because the station was gone for like 10 years and just came back this year. So we're very excited that it's gotten a lot of traction. And I mean, I love rock music. That's kind of what I grew up on. So it's nice to be on a rock station. Yeah. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Yeah. That, yeah. That's kind of where I feel. Oh yeah. At home yeah. too. I don't know really. I don't. I don't really know where else I would. I. I would be able to do. It. I can talk way more to rock or metal than anything else. So I. I feel that. Well, radio, you have to be on top of whatever you're talking about. You have to be on top of celebrities. If you're on a country station, which I used to be on, I have to know about Luke Bryan and, you know, whatever, you know, then local bands, you have to know about all the different genres. So it is kind of neat because you do learn about a lot of different music. Yes. Probably have a lot of knowledge out there that no people know. And that's really cool, though. Useless knowledge. It's my specialty. (laughs) I I wouldn't call it useless knowledge. I wouldn't call it useless because, I mean, that also brings us to the next point. I mean, because of everything that you've done, all the experience that you have and all the knowledge that you have, I mean, you are on the board of directors for the Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame as well, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like a slacker because I don't feel like I do enough because this is such a great organization and there's so much to be done. So many different, you know, people involved with it that I feel kind of insignificant because this is growing into such an amazing thing. But to be so to be on the board. I do really feel honored and it's you know great to be surrounded by so much talent all the time well that's great thank you for joining it and you know mm-hmm. putting in your service and you know helping out with everything and you do a little bit more than just be on the board of directors last year you even hosted it and the year before that correct what do you mean i've hosted it every, every year, year. Okay. Oh, that's I, was like, yeah, you, I was what like what's happening yeah, we, we, know. We, we, I, I only made it last year that was my first <laughs> year just, yeah so. we had okay, a conversation right. which i shouldn't I admit on this show sorry brandon no. said yeah, yeah, someone yeah. else was like was supposed to do it one year or like or so i i, I understand there were there was a mix up there was some but yeah you did you did do it every year i remember we were just talking about this off camera yeah and we were there for the, our first cpma which was last year when you came up you were like brandon was like by the way this is jenna clay and everything i was like i remember talking to dan i was like Oh my God, that's Jenna Clay. You did I, was, not. I, I did. I was you like, because I, I was like, I grew up listening to you. Like, no, I don't say, I don't say growing up, but like, how old am I? No, not like growing up, how like since you? I was like a child. But I mean, like, okay. I remember like tuning in, like when I was like a junior and senior in high school, yeah. and I would hear your voice, like you, uh, Nipsey, Jen Shade, like all, all the all the local, because I would flip between the different channels. Yeah, but like I knew everyone's name, and so when he's just like, yeah, that's 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 Jenna Clay, and I was like, I'm. <laughs> I don't. I Ricky Bobby. I was like, I, d- I don't know what to do with my hands. I was like, hi. So here's a question. So I, you didn't know what I looked like. Uh, and so I did. Oh, okay. But he, but he still, because he, I remember you guys walked up. It was you and uh, Chris Garnett. Uh, Chris I, Garrett. Yeah. Chris, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Chris Garrett. Yeah. Uh, my apologies, Chris. Um, and Brandon walked up with you guys. Um, mm-hmm. and then he just like I knew who you guys were, but he still did the formal introduction, and I was like, 
Yeah, okay. I remember feeling a, a little bit nervous. I'm like, all right, these guys are the real deal. <laughs> just like a, a podcast I started as a joke in my best in my guest bedroom, <laughs> and here we are now. Don't even know how we made it here. Now we're talking to experts. And <laughs> Don't we all start out that way, though? You know? I mean, yeah. we all just kind of fake it till we make it. Well, how'd you get your start? Well, I actually, and this is going to make people mad who have, you know, been wanting to get into radio their whole lives, but I kind of fell into it in a weird way. I, um, you know, I went to school for broadcast production, so TV news behind the scenes, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I got a job doing 12 to 6 a.m. on Saturdays on WTPA, actually was my first radio gig. But meanwhile, I was working at a TV station doing TV production. Um, and after a couple of years, I decided to move to the beach to try to get my foot in the door doing TV news reporting, which I ended up doing for a couple of years until I was fired because you're not a real broadcaster until you're fired. So... Get ready for that. Um, so then <laughs> Woo! I, I can't <laughs> wait. Man, this is going to yeah, be a short run. <laughs> it's going to be short. So then I moved back here and actually worked at Trafax. A lot of people know me from Trafax because I was on 10 radio stations and a TV station. And that's actually how I connected with so many people in radio. Networking is huge. Yes. Getting your foot in the door, huge. I can't state that enough. So actually, it's funny. Um, Chris James actually said, you know, if Amy's ever out of town and you want to fill in some time, come on. So I called him one day and he's like, actually, we need you to learn how to do news because Amy's getting married. And unfortunately, uh, John Beeston, who was the, the news person on Wink 104, passed away. So she was doing his job as well. And they okay. had no one to do news. So I had the, the radio and the news background. So I learned to do it. And then they never let me leave. <laughs> Never let you leave. And that's literally how I ended up there. They did not let me leave. So you started on like the what seems like the worst shift. You like, when you first started there, like yeah, the yeah. one shift you did not want. But then you had to travel, get fired. Yes. Come back. Yeah. From all that experience, you were so uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You were so valuable then. Valuable. That, that you were so that. valuable that n now you're in like the the like the sweet spot. Yeah. Of WTB, you got yeah, that you prime got like time. The, the prime time, right? The, the uh, powerhouse. Mornings are where it's at. That's you know, that's when people are listening the most. They're most engaged, um, and we get them when they're in their cars. They're trapped and have to listen. That's a good so point. We like that. Point. You true. better give us a shout out tomorrow. I'm going to listen just to make of sure. Of course. Oh. You're going to listen. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We okay. Hey. All right. I will message you and be like, I didn't hear a call out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We're going to call in. Yeah. But, okay. but hey, hey. Hey, aren't you forgetting You something? were on our show, now put us on yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you talk. That'd be cool. Do I don't know She's what I'm going to talk, talk about. I'll just say, I'll just be like in my car, stuck in traffic, being like, no, listen to her. The traffic's bad. It's Yeah, don't. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's don't not go to good. work. Um, wow. So that's really cool. I think I actually remember watching you on WGAL. Okay. Was it during traffic or when I was doing news? I think it was news. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it worked in news some too. Yeah. I, I don't know. Because I don't really think I cared about traffic. When you were doing traffic. Okay. Yeah. You were, well, you were old enough to be driving and like really caring well, about no, it. No, I mean, I was like just about to start driving when you were doing traffic. That's when you should care about it. You need to learn about the roads. Oh, my dad was a truck driver. Oh. He made sure I knew everything. All right. <laughs> trust me. You can drive stick is what you're saying. Yes. That was okay. my first my first car. Yep. Ah, I miss it. I, I, I actually, I mean, I knew how to drive stick for a long time, but like I really got good at it uh, about a year ago. I went to a, a an undisclosed location for training or uh, for work, um, and there was there were some fun vehicles that were only in stick it's, there, and it was uh, you know got a lot of, got a lot of sand dunes. So much more <laughs> fun. So um, much more fun. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. But uh, with that though, um, oh, there was something I was gonna say. Uh, so that's what I was gonna ask. So you have the morning show, mm -hmm. but people are also trapped on the way home. That's I mean, true. Is it? It, morning still beats out like the the going home commute or are they kind of close or not even close i don't know why but morning drive is really the the big time of day um that people listen i don't well, cause know because everybody's going to work and they want to hear what's going on in the beginning of the day at the end of the day everybody just they want to yeah. just call everybody and see what's going on and there you they, go they're off work they're not gonna be trapped for the next eight hours also That's i mean true. if you get like a chance to win like a thousand dollars like i know a lot of radios do like so call in and if you get the, the secret word or whatever, you get a thousand. I mean, that's going to make my Monday suck a lot less yeah. more. Yeah, I mean, we or, give or, away or tickets lot, to shows less. and stuff. Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. going to start calling in now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so also, I think a good point would be that, like, if I had to choose between working in the morning and working in the evening, I'd definitely choose morning. Are so. you a morning guy? No, not at all. I hate <laughs> mornings. Yeah, but, I hate it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm used to suffering, so there's that. There's so. lots of suffering in radio. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. There's some kind of dark comfort in the fact that I'm used to it. 
it, it, it <laughs> and it's familiar. It's like ah, this is this is the good uncomfortable. Yep. Every day at yeah. six a.m., my alarm goes off when Jenna's already been up for four hours. And That's right. I'm like, what are you doing? It's lunchtime. Yeah. I, oh my <laughs> god. I, know, I wake that up. That is so <laughs> depressing to me. Because I thought I, w- I mean, I wake up at four twenty. Um, but like four twenty. <laughs> She's like, that's literally what my alarm is. I have like no idea that. what that means. <laughs> Four twenty, but yeah, um, that that that's crazy. You you are still are, you've already been at work for an hour and a half. Yeah. Golly, man, I, uh, my hat is off to you, Jenna. I'm like, really a morning person. Like I can jump out of bed, and I'm one of those people where even if I'm really tired, I can as soon as the mic's on, I can talk and be really you know with it because you know you have to do that with this job. And, oh yeah. And this too. I mean, you know, you guys could have been asleep on the couch over there right before we started talking, and no one would know. Who says I wasn't? That's true. I don't have pictures. <laughs> I was eating a sandwich right before you guys walked in, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What yep. kind? Uh, Arby's, because um, I came r- pretty much right from work. So, okay. you know, fast food. Not not proud of it, but, no, but we're sharing. But, it works. The, but the good thing is they, they have the meat. They do. They do. They, they did. I mean, I, I, that is the right slogan. Great. And now <laughs> we get be sponsored awesome. by Arby's. Arby's. <laughs> yeah. Please give us money. We could use it. <laughs> <laughs> so, qu- question, though. W- if we have to get fired yes. to make it, yes. What's the best way to get fired? How how do we handle getting fired? How do how do we make it work the best for us? I, you know, I don't know because they they fired me, but then made me work more days. I don't know how it happened. It was a weird situation. <laughs> they fired you to a promotion? <laughs> kind of. They're like, you we're firing you, but you're not going to get paid unless you keep working for a few more months. I'm not really sure what happened. <laughs> so that's, that's not the way to do it. Um, but you know. I would, I wouldn't burn a bridge, is what I would say. Like I wouldn't start swearing on the radio so that you can never get another radio job. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if that's the industry you want to be in, you definitely don't don't want to yeah. do that. But if I'm ready to get out of radio, uh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> just, just be ready. <laughs> just <laughs> dropping an f bomb. Yes. she's like, gonna run Burgundy. She's gonna run Burgundy <laughs> the radio. That's exactly. <laughs> who put that on the teleprompter? Right, I'm Ron Burgundy. Yeah, exactly. Do you have a teleprompter in radio? No, no, no. In fact, it's really cool because it's almost like improv because we just turn on the mic. We know kind of what we're going to talk about, but then we just riff and it's, you know, reacting to each other. So that's kind of a cool aspect of it. That is really cool. I mean, whenever uh, or not whenever we did, we still do Darker with Daniel, our other podcast. But basically, most of the time we would just go in knowing a little bit about our guests, you know, but like we wanted to honestly be undereducated on them so that way it was organic and when we learned about them and what yeah. they do and that was really cool because you just kind of riff with it and you go yeah. and it kind of turns into this beautiful thing it's beautiful yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was just such a sentiment it was it's beautiful it's beautiful <laughs> but but one last thing that i would love to know is you, what 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 is your morning routine like like to, from the time that you wake up to the time you're walking out the door, like, <laughs> what, what is what is that like? It's literally 15 minutes. I'm not a girly girl. I get up, I brush my teeth, I get dressed, I put my diet Dr Pepper in my bag, and I leave. That's my morning routine. So I you don't you. even like Mm-mm. you don't even do coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. Really? No, I don't like coffee. So, but I drink diet Dr Pepper, which is terrible. I think probably for me, but I don't care. I need some caffeine. I mean, I you drink know? a cup of coffee and then go get a Celsius, which is 200 milligrams of caffeine. So, I go into work rocking about 250 milligrams of caffeine, and I'm still <laughs> tired. It's yeah. just with anxiety now. So, I mean, anxiety is the worst. Yeah, I yeah. like coffee, but I don't really grab it in the morning. I mean, I I I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to sound like weird, but like, I literally just wake up and I drink water. Like I, I have oh, water in the weird. morning. That's, that's I, it. I wake up. I let my dog out and I go back in. I feed him his breakfast. I chug a whole glass of water as I'm making my coffee. And the only I, I will not wake up if I can't drink coffee. It just wakes mm. me right up. So. Well, now you made me feel bad. I forgot to mention that Vader, my cat, follows me into the bathroom and I have to stop and pet him every time he meows. Oh. So. Vader, you have a cat mm-hmm. named Vader. I, I have a, don't. It's a black cat named Vader. We have a one-eyed. Siamese looking cat oh. named Phasma and a brown dog named Leia. So my, my girlfriend has yes. a black cat named Vader. What? I swear to God. They should be Vader and then she has a black and white uh, and she's named Zelda. Okay. I can. I like it. I like uh, yeah, it. D- uh, that's crazy. She's going to freak out when she sees this episode. I'm pretty sure. Well, we're going to be BFFs after this, so whatever. She'll be at the she'll be at the award show. Okay. So, we will be sure to uh do some introductions then. Let's do it. Well, Jenna, thank you yes. so much for taking the time out of your day and out of your 
completely different schedule than everyone no, else. I'm to, ready uh, to, to, to yeah, we're gonna let you go home go and go to sleep, sleep now. Okay, it's okay. Shh, just uh, 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 Hunter, can you can you can get you the, lights? the lights? Can can you just dim the lights for right. uh, Jenna? I th- just okay. boo. All right. <laughs> I mean, soon. Like I need to go to bed. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Thought she was gonna start snoring. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, thank you so much oh, for your time. Thank you for having it's me. Always good seeing you. We're looking yeah. forward to seeing you at the awards coming up here. Yeah, let's hope I make it. Oh, you'll be there. Okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. there. I will. All right. All right. Thank you. Stay tuned for our next guest. Our musical guest and another guest of honor, the Jelly Bricks. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having Happy us. Happy to be here. You're very welcome. So you guys have been a band, the same band, for over 20 years, correct? Going on 30, right? This is our 27th year, I think. Yeah, yeah. we just turned 27 January 16th. You guys are like setting like the precedence of like you know, people are like, oh, how long have you guys been married? This is our 60th year anniversary. <laughs> it's like it, you guys are doing like the same thing, but with like a band. It's like, oh, this is our 27th year anniversary because that's just that's just like on her like outside of you know things like, I you know Def Leppard, like ACDC, the Rolling Stones, like stuff like that. It's like, but you guys are doing it, and you guys are doing it here, and you guys have doing it more had, than just here. <laughs> yeah, but you guys doing it, but your career is just like it's so colorful like you guys have done so much over all those years please tell, tell me all I about think it you just reach a point where it, well first of all it surprises us i think when we think if it's been 27 years but you just reach a point where you just you, you there's i don't know what else we would be doing at this point like, so right? it's so ingrained like, what, in you yeah you know, what do i do with my time now right, right exactly the Ricky four Bobby, of us, what do i do with my hands we write <laughs> songs together and it's just something that we do so we just continue to do it i think yeah, I mean, sometimes I tell people who don't play in bands <clears throat> that if you have like a group of guys that you hang out with and maybe you have like a, a pool night or a bowling night or poker night, poker night, we have a regular a Wednesday evening rehearsal that's been going on for years and years. And we, you know, we catch up on our lives. We gossip about the music business and <laughs> like Danny and Alan guy. I tell you what, I, <laughs> we'll be talking all about you guys this yeah. upcoming week. This is, this is exactly what we do. It's what it, only we've been doing it for three years. You've been doing it for twenty seven, and it, it's kind of cool how you guys came to be. Whenever I first took a look into your guys' music, I was like, "Wow, they put out their first album in ninety six, correct? Ninety seven, ninety seven. Okay, yeah. but you formed in ninety five, ninety six, ninety six. Right? Yes, <laughs> ninety six. So I'm like, "Wow, that is some time." I, I just automatically assumed childhood best friends, and then <laughs> I started doing my research, and I'm like. Wait a second, Larry is from Youngstown, Ohio originally, and you had some uh, family out here. You came out to the area, you recorded some music, and uh, well, t- why don't you tell the story, I guess, on here? Well, you have it pretty accurate. I, I should say there were two childhood friends in this band who are still childhood friends, and oh. they're still on the same maturity level, and that would be Garrick and our other guitar player, Bryce. Yeah, we've known each other. We both grew up in the Reading area. And we've known each other. So we literally went to the same nursery school together. And uh, yeah. Shut and up. Went, went, Are you for real, you dude? the same grade all the way through high school. And we didn't actually, I mean, we knew each other because we both, you know, we both had last names that started with C. So we sat near each other. But we didn't really. Had pictures ha- right next to each other exactly, in the yearbook. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't hang out until we formed a band in uh, in high school. And then basically we've just been in, we were, I've been in like four different bands with Bryce before we ended up in this one. And. We've been together ever since. Wow. So okay, yeah. I was I was kind of right with my assumption, but the yeah. story there's of there's not how- a lot of press out there about them being childhood friends. Although the other part childhood of it is acquaintances. True. Yeah. yeah. Th- I mean, th- there actually, we go. Yeah. Th- they don't even really like each other now, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, I was in uh, Ohio. I grew up in Ohio. I was playing in a number of bands, and I had sort of hit that that spot where I had played with everybody in town, and I. It's not that I had made enemies of anybody in particular, but I just didn't know what to do with myself next. I had been in a band that broke up, Mm -hmm. and I had these songs. And then meanwhile, I had a cousin who is a singer-songwriter who lives in Boiling Springs named Steve Yannick, who's actually just made a great record of his own. Um, Shout out, Steve. Yes, shout out, Steve Yannick. Uh, He invited me to come here and use some of his accrued studio time that he had at the Green Room in Harrisburg where Garrick was working as an engineer at the time. Uh, I didn't know Garrick, and I, all I knew was that I had an opportunity to come and record some songs. 
So I come into town, record, I think, six, five, six, dem seven demos, something like that. And I had everything accounted for instrumentally except for bass parts. So these were a bunch of tracks without bass. And then... Garrick? I, I had coincidentally been on vacation at the time, so I, I missed Larry completely the first time he came to town. I was out of the state. But when I got back, uh, one of the co-owners you know, played it for me, and I was like, I really like this music a lot. And I had just left a previous band and you know, had was doing nothing but just engineering at the studio at the time. So I actually contacted Larry and asked if he wanted to move to Pennsylvania and form a band. And surprisingly, he said yes. So actually, I put bass tracks down on what he had left there. I, pl I sent it out to him, and apparently he liked it enough that he decided to uh, take a chance and just move out here. That's insane. Yeah. Dude, yeah, dude, like, <laughs> that's not like... That's that's like not, a th dude. If someone was like, oh well, like I'm from like the 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 Reading area, I can make it to practice. But I'm like, all right, nope, you're out. Like cut. Like <laughs> you're not you're not gonna make it. But you're like, will you move here and form a band? And and Larry's like, yes. <laughs> well, you, you know, son of a bitch. I'm it's in. worth <laughs> noting now that this was definitely at a time in my life when I was in the, I I'm not gonna have a plan B. I'm gonna become the next whatever. Yeah. You know, Elvis. And uh, I never thought that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good name to quote, though. I just I saw that movie not too long yeah. ago. So, um, but finding out that Garrick really liked my songs and then finding out that he knew how to put exactly the right kind of bass on those songs, I just thought, well, how could I say no? Because on top of everything else, he was saying, I know a guy who plays guitar and he'd be great. And I know a guy who plays the drums and he'd be great. And I was like, well... There's nothing missing from that list. So. <laughs> ah, okay. If you don't mind me asking, how old were you guys when this happened? 22, 23. Yeah, right around that age. Yep. Early 20s, and yep. you're just like, all right, yeah, let's go out here. Let's do we're it. We're going to send it. And, you know, Larry brings up a good point. He was, I mean, that was the only plan. And I think for the four of us, that as soon as he got to town and we had that first uh, rehearsal, you know, the, the, actually the three of us without Larry started rehearsing some of the songs before he was able to move to town. So when he arrived, we were able to start putting things together and we took it you know it was the only thing we were doing at the time and we were rehearsing you know and we all had day jobs at the time so we would get together at six o'clock at night rehearse till midnight we were doing like six hours a night six days a week mm -hmm. for months before you know we went out and played our first show and we got you know i think we got pretty tight and you know really started working as a as a as a band and we had a lot of the same influences and could speak the same language. So it really just worked out very well right from the start. That's amazing. Man. Yeah. I was going to say, I, one of the things that I read, uh, when it was a description of you guys and it was an interview with you guys, you guys have stated that like the, you guys can communicate just so well when it comes to like the creative process, like the way you guys create, you guys speak like the same language and you're always on the same page essentially. And like, and that is that, that's so critical. I mean, especially it, it's a testament to a band that's, been doing it for 27 going on 27 years now it's it's so important i i really only truly had that in one act of mine and i i can just speak to the limited amount of time that i got to experience that yes like that when you find that like you said like it's 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 incredible when you actually find that and what it can do that it's like the glue like because if you don't have that and you're constantly fighting each other on ideas like well mm -hmm. i want to go a little heavier okay well i want to go a little lighter or poppier it's like well, go find another band. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I would say, <laughs> actually, say we do. We still 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 do have those conversations where you know somebody wants to go a little heavier, someone wants to go a little lighter, and we actually have knock down, drag out fights when we're writing songs. Like, if anybody looking from the outside would be thinking this is looking really ugly, but I think ultimately what what it is is the respect for each other's uh, you know artistic opinions. Absolutely, and it you know yeah, it, it, it sort of just. The best idea wins. Is Absolutely, our philosophy. The Jelly Bricks, not not in a braggadocious way, but we actually function the way that you might imagine a government that was not dysfunctional might function. Because <laughs> we talk, we listen to one another, we consider what we have to say intelligently. Mm -hmm. We ah. are we are fair toward each other, and then we come to some consensus. You actually have bi bipartisan communication. Yeah, and it's actually doable. That's a, that's the, the uh, I'm gonna leave that there. I know. Um, <laughs> I, there's so yeah. many things that could be said about that, but we're, we're that that's a rabbit hole if there ever was one. <laughs> but it's we're worth gonna noting as to the oddity of our longevity. Yeah. I think that is one of the factors that we figured out how to not be jerks to each other and get through difficult 
decision making. So it's not like you're, you know, two brothers beating each other up because you're arguing over something. You guys are actually sitting down and having a nice conversation. With oh, each other. well, I mean, it does get ugly sometimes, <laughs> like he said. You know, yeah. we have Garrett's egos. Like, and I'm going to go put my on your drums. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's like, no, you won't. You gotta, you know, I know you don't play the drums, Larry, but like either way. But it, no, that, that would, I mean, that that's. I can imagine it, it could get to like almost like to that point though in certain in certain regards like where you're just like you get so heated and so passionate about your opinion and, and your and your side your argument and then it's like well I completely disagree with you in every regard mm -hmm. and here's why <laughs> but we're able to sort of separate that into okay this is about the business and the music nobody takes it personally you know we're not saying you have horrible ideas if we don't agree we're just saying I think this is the better choice for this song Convince me otherwise. Sure. Right? And I think that's what has led you to writing, what, seven studio albums now? Is that what we're up to? <laughs> and we're working on our eighth. You're working on your eighth? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, and we got to stop. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, that's, that's awesome. So so number eight, and this is this is a full length, correct? Yes. That's the intention. Yes. That's, it. Yeah. that's the intention. Okay. So where what, can we, can I ask? What's the influence? What's the what's the what's the lifeblood of this album? What direction does it go? I can ask more questions. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is actually I would say this is an interesting one because the great majority of these songs were written during the, the lockdown. Okay. And as a result, you know, we were all physically separated, and we all just had our own. We basically spent band money. We got us we got everybody set up with you know. A computer with uh, we're using GarageBand yep. and mics and ways to record, and we basically somebody would uh, write it like Larry write a demo of a song he was interested in, in us working on. It would go off to Bryce. He put his parts on it. Tom would put some drums on it. I'd put bass on it. We and it would kind of go around that way, and we'd send mixes out to each other and sort of. And we, we did that for two years basically. So yeah, I mean, uh, we are fortunate in that we have multiple everybody writes in the band and so and everybody kind of has varying levels of approach sometimes you're almost scripting the whole song imagining the band playing the parts that you have in mind and other times you're kind of throwing an idea at the band and waiting to find out what they'll do mm -hmm. and we ultimately wind up collaborating on everything that we do but like he said during the pandemic we could each sort of start ideas and send them out to each other we were physically around each other i think only twice during the entire lockdown because we were goodness. playing it safe and I, to be honest it was kind of a for us it was the first excuse we had to take a break in 20 something years because when you stay together this long oh yeah we never really took a hiatus you know <laughs> i'm sure you guys are like i know guys it's it's really it's really true be right there, honey. No, uh, it's really <laughs> terrible. I mean, I'm so excited to relax. <laughs> the I worst hate having my have Wednesday again. nights free again. Oh, that's <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> First time in 27 years I have a free Wednesday night. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> now, I, I, I could imagine after 27 years. I mean, yeah, that's... Uh, but, I mean, hey, apparently some uh, some good stuff came out of this because there's a... No, I mean, the, let me ask you this. So you doing it that way, you having a creative process that way, do you think moving forward you would use this process again to write again like do you think the creative process was better worse more interesting less interesting like do you think you would just if you ever wanted to get explorative again when writing do you think you would use this process again or do you plan on just continuing to use this because it's easy to send stuff to each other i think you know we've tried doing things a lot of different ways and i know you mentioned the song brooklyn mm -hmm. before we were on here but mm -hmm. we actually wrote that together in real time stuck in a van in a traffic jam and it's what? one of I'm our sorry, more <laughs> brooklyn was written we were on our way to a gig in brooklyn and we were stuck in traffic and the four of us collaborated and wrote that while we were stuck in the van together and it's one of our more successful songs, which leads me to think maybe we should do sort of stuff like that more often. <laughs> where's where's heavy condensed writing, huh? traffic right now? Let's go get stuck, guys. Yeah. All right, and let the creative process begin. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I just like that I think we all have very open minds about creativity and mm -hmm. about ideas. You know, like I, I try to be very resolute that no idea is a completely bad one until we're sure it's a completely bad one sure you know? absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> now when i was like doing a little bit of research on you i didn't see you on any upcoming tours but where are some sp some places that you have toured before and where can people go to see you perform live because i'd love to come watch a live performance of your yeah music. so would i 
Do you want to take that I one? Think the only, you're, I think you're right. Right now, the only thing we have on the books is uh, one in, is it May? I, I know we Hershey I think, vineyard think, at Hershey. Yeah, yeah, the vineyard at Hershey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're still kind of getting back out there again. Last year, we hit, you know we obviously were getting. I think we had a handful of shows last year, but uh, right now it's actually been kind of nice because we've always had a balance playing out live with going out uh, with recording. And for the past several months, we've been able to focus just on the recording process because anytime we have a show, we still get together and we practice for that show. You know, even though yep. we know the songs at this point we still want to make sure that you know we're not rusty or anything like that so absolutely yeah because we love to play live and Mm -hmm. we have a lot of fun playing shows but i think we just as much enjoy sequestering ourselves and working on music and not dealing with that too you know absolutely yeah we're kind of doing that more so at the moment but but the nice thing is uh, uh, talking about this whole creative process again something that we haven't done in a while which we're starting to do uh, this particular cycle is we're sort of workshopping the songs live again because you know when we first got started we would play these songs out live for you know months or years before heading, putting uh, taking them into the studio mm-hmm. and then as we as our career went on we would actually take the songs into the studio before we ever played them live like we wouldn't play a song before we actually put it on an album and now we're sort of getting back to like playing the songs and then gauging the reaction and gauging the reaction and trying different ideas yeah. in the show and you know finding what works and basically it's, it's just a big long pre-production for for the songs and it's i think it's definitely taking them to some places we absolutely probably wouldn't have gone if we had just gone right in the studio with them right away well absolutely i think that's what you know that kind of creative writingness and the the, the avenues you've taken over the years to explore yourselves as a band i think that's what has gotten you guys on the ballot to be inducted into the Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame, right? That's really nice, by the way, that we're on the ballot. You um, guys, you guys are on the ballot. Like, and yeah. I, I'm rooting for you guys, man. Like, I just like, I, I'll be honest, man. I'm just like, I'm so humbled that I even get to like, like as a as a fellow musician, prior or not, you know, once a musician, always a musician. We're all musicians here, but like, I I feel just so humbled to even like sit down with other fellow artists that have been doing their crap. You got you guys dedicated yourselves to this. You guys did the thing, and like. I just feel honored to sit down and even pick your guys' brains about your guys' process and, That's and nice. get to meet the, the people that keep this scene going. It, you guys immediately contribute to what keeps this scene on the map. And that's incredible. And like, I'm just I'm just very happy to be part of that process in, in whatever way. And we just get to sit down and pick your brains and just listen to awesome stories about how you guys have been doing crazy stuff for 27 years. Well, it's an honor to be acknowledged. So it is. I appreciate that, too. Of, of course. <laughs> um, with Your hard that, work deserves acknowledgement. Ex- exactly. And and with that being said, then, I mean, I just got to ask before we wrap this up, because I, I know we do have a live performance from you guys then as well. That can't wait to see. Um, Jelly Bricks. How? How, how, how was what was what was the, the inspiration for that name? Well, when we started, I I was determined I wanted to have a band name that would allow us to do whatever we wanted musically, because I had a little bit of a hang up major Beatles fan okay and I kind of came into the whole rock and roll concept with the belief that there's almost no rules because if you listen deeply enough to what they did that was their approach they didn't have they didn't obey any they kept that that is rock and roll yeah rock and roll is like I'm gonna do what I whatever is successful like you know I'm gonna do it the way you wind up having you know a song like Helter Skelter on the same record as a song like Blackbird says so much you know about the ethos of the jelly bricks but when we were looking for a name I just wanted something that would allow some range of style and it was actually uh Reg Troop who is the drummer from the Martini Brothers Mm -hmm. He was a part of a little group of people that did some brainstorming of names, and they came up. He came up with the name Jelly Bricks as a suggestion for something that had a little bit of a yin and yang quality to it. I love awesome. that. And but. Garrick and I liked that one the best out of the names that were th- were thrown at us. And so the Jelly Bricks were born. And it turned out to be a great name. It's it's a it's kind of a ridiculous name, but unlike. Lots of other bands, if you Google the Jelly Bricks, you're only going to find us. Yeah, that's, right. it. Yeah. Exactly. that's it. It's, it's very 100%. easy to find us. There's right? no mistaking yeah. it. Yeah, nobody <laughs> else wanted that. There were name. no websites when we first got started, but yeah, it, it turned out to be great. I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, I went on Google and I was like, I was like, the Jelly Rolls, nothing. The Jelly Beans, nothing. The Jelly Donuts. And I was like, oh, the Jelly Bricks. And I was, oh, I'm just kidding. But like, I, knew, I knew it was the Jelly Bricks. Right. You're, you're not wrong. Um, it was, it was, 
it, it is very easy to find. But that, that's an awesome story, though, because you're right. Like, and you, you probably didn't even know it at the time, but ingenious marketing tactic. Like, <laughs> didn't know it. Didn't at know time. it at the time. Well, and you're just know. like, this really worked out. <laughs> like, I mean, and actually, if you want to know what's really interesting about being a band together for 27 years at this time, it's that we were a band that started off putting flyers on people's windshields and hanging them on utility poles only to come back the night of the gig and find every flyer gone to developing our first website when we were saying what's that <laughs> having a spotify account you guys like, website yeah. is very nice by the way oh thank it's, you that's <laughs> garrick's work actually. yeah hey yeah, yeah. yeah. credit no, where it's that's, due that's awesome i mean I, so i mean i know you guys are all over uh serious radio um where can everyone else find your, find your stuff? Let's, this is your time to plug it. Well, yeah, like you mentioned, we can be heard on uh, Little Steven's Underground Garage. That's okay. Sirius Channel 21. Yes, and there's another channel that's Little Steven's Coolest Songs in the World that plays Jelly Bricks music also. So we're very we're quite blessed to have a that's lot of airplay. A, from... That's a hell of a title there to be <laughs> in that category. So that's awesome. <laughs> Yes, well, our last album was called Some Kind of Lucky, partially because Bryce wrote a song with that title, but also because it really felt to us like it kind of summed up our story. You Some know. Kind of Lucky. Yeah. That's awesome. But well, you can hear us just about everywhere on the internet. I mean, we're on every streaming service and all that sort of thing. So Awesome. Awesome. So with that, keep a lookout. We've got an eighth full-length album coming out soon, so... We'll keep you guys posted as we hear more about that. But then without a further ado, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your guys' live performance here. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Guys. Wheels are turning. I ain't moving anywhere today. Things get broken. Doors left open. Plans get in the way. Thank you.